Hello and welcome to a pro patch breakdown here at LOL Class. Let's take a look at this week's changes. So with Darius's update, this finally makes him a viable champion because before when you got the kill reset on one champion, the problem is you would have to auto them like five times or get five stacks to get the full damage again. But now if you can just auto them once, they're basically dead because you get the full damage on your ult and then you just get the resets. This makes this early game, mid game team fight potential really, really strong and it makes up for his extremely horrible late game. So with Garen, they're increasing the late game damage of his E and giving him a couple of kinks to all of his abilities. I personally don't think that it'll change him that much because Garrick's gimmick is just to do a lot of damage and have that early game power. They're just giving him more of a late game scaling. But even with this change, there's still other champions with ridiculous kits. For example, if you play Garen against Gnar, he's just gonna cut you out. If you play Garen against tanks, they're just gonna tank all the damage and it's still not gonna be enough to bring Garen into the competitive scene. But it may change for other solo queue players that are Garen mains. This patch Skarner is getting basically a mini rework where a lot of his values are getting changed and his passive is getting totally changed. To start with his passive, he is getting these crystal spires placed around the map that are objectives that he can capture, his team can capture, or the enemy team can capture. And if his team controls the objective, he gets 100 move speed, ton of attack speed, and restores a lot of mana when he's near it. So basically Skarner is going to be really strong when he's near his own spires that he controls. And inversely, if the other team controls it, he doesn't get any bonus, and he'll be weaker than before. His Q is getting changed just a little bit. The ratios, basically for his entire kit, they're shifting him more towards an a AD champion rather than a hybrid where he has AP and AD ratios. He still has a couple AP ratios, but well as than before, he's more AD focused now. So his Q is basically the same, but uh, a little bit less cooldown reduced when you're attacking minions. Instead of getting instead of being 0.5 and doubled to one on champions, it's 0.25 and quadruple against champions, still bringing it up to one. So his W is getting changed, where he gives a shield based on his maximum health, kind of like Nautilus, which is nice because before it scaled AP and you didn't really want to build AP on Skarner to begin with. So that one seems like a buff. Other than that, it seems about the same ability. His E is getting changed a decent amount, where um, passive will make it so that. Uh, you can reduce the cooldown of Fracture by hitting people with your E or your ult. And then the active on the E is the same thing as before, but on top of slowing them for 45%, it'll put the Crystal Venom, which was basically its old passive, on the target, and his next auto will stun them for one second. So you didn't have now you don't have to worry about getting stacks on them. Basically, you shoot your E at them, it's a 2.5 second slow, and then you run them and hit them for one second stun. So that's actually a lot of utility in his kit, just from the E. It makes it a pretty useful ability it's to where before it was not very good. It's ult is basically the same thing, just uh, more of an AD ratio than an AP ratio. It's hard to say whether these changes will help Skarner. I think that Riot wants Skarner to be good, so maybe it will be good changes. I think that the mana regen from the Spires is pretty cool, and if you can get a fight on them, it will be pretty strong. So my guess is that this will help Skarner on top of the new items and all the other changes going up. it will be pretty good after this patch. So Mordekaiser now gets full XP from a dual lane if he's last hitting. So he'd be replacing the AD carry in dual lane. And if he if his team ever kills Dragon, he gets the Dragon. So as far as the Dragon thing goes, I feel like it's gonna make the Dragon a huge priority for Mordekaiser in the game. Because if Mordekaiser gets that Dragon, it seems like you're just gonna lose the turret like straight up from him having that Dragon Spirit. Like he'll just go mid, push the creeps, have the Dragon start attacking the turret, and you're gonna you're probably gonna lose that turret unless you have a bunch of people there committed to defending it. So as far as him being in bot lane, I'm not sure if he's actually gonna end up getting getting played that way, because that's uh, like, I honestly don't, don't know, because getting that full XP is like a huge thing. Like him being over level from the enemy AD carry and support is pretty big, but he's going to be so bad at like laning early game. Like in the early levels, he's going to lose to any AD carry. I'm pretty sure. I'm not I'm not sure if he'll be able to survive or not, honestly, but I don't know. It, it's 
it's pretty it's pretty cool so I'm, I'm a fan when they balance out the stats they won't make it too ridiculous but honestly like if Mordekaiser can lane bottom and have the experience of a solo laner it'll just be way too strong because his laning abilities is, are already top notch but it becomes even more ridiculous if now you have a solo lane Mordekaiser in your lane where he just like auto pushes the lane and can't be punished for being higher level. So Alster is considered quite like a contested pick in competitive. And on this, on the PBE right now, they're buffing his HP per level by four. So like a small buff there and they're reducing his, his headbutt speed. So they're making it basically easier to do the head, headbutt pulverize combo, especially when you have higher ping, but making it a little bit slower. So I, honestly, I, I don't think this should really affect Alistair's strength at all. I think it should basically leave him at the same strength he is now overall. And it should just make it easier for people to use him. Elise is getting a nerf this patch where they are reducing the amount of damage that her Q in human form does from 8% to 4%. And I don't really think it'll matter at all because Elise is insanely broken right now. And she's going to need a lot more nerfs than that to be not permaban. So I'm not really looking at Elise too much lately because I just assume she's going to be banned or whoever gets her gets a free win. Kassim is getting a buff to his ult this patch where it'll now have a 0.2 AP ratio and each consecutive jump will be another 0.1 ratio added onto that, which will basically just make Driftwalk do more damage based on how much AP you have, which I don't know if it really will help him. Obviously he'll do more damage, but I'm hoping it doesn't bring him back to the meta because Kassim is super obnoxious. Lee Sin's getting a pretty nice buff this patch where he returns 20 energy on the first of his passive and 10 on the second as opposed to 15 on both. What this will do is just give him a little bit more energy in fights where he's having to consecutively use his abilities and maybe not get two autos between each one. So he'll be gaining 20 energy for that first auto afterwards as opposed to 15, which maybe it'll give him enough energy to use one more spell on a fight where otherwise he could. He's also getting a buff to his ultimate that makes it deal additional damage to the people that kick the person through. And it looks like it does damage based on how much bonus health the person you kick has. So ideally, if you kick a tank through the entire team, you'll do a ton of damage to their whole team. So it's an interesting concept. I didn't really think Lisa needed buffs, but his win rate was kind of low and he has not been picked as much as he was before. So these should help. They're, they're pretty cool buffs where it's not going to blatantly make them broken, but it will help them in certain scenarios. So I think it's a good change. Lissandra's getting a buff this patch where she heals herself during her ult when she uses it on herself. I think it's kind of an interesting change. It might help Lissandra come back into the meta, but it seemed like her damage was hurt a lot in her last nerfs, so maybe this will help her by just giving her a little bit more sustain in fights, where she can maybe get enough health to come back and do one more Q before she would otherwise have to zone you, flash out, or die. So I guess we'll have to see how it is. It might help her, but I still feel it's like her damage is a little bit low. Lucian now scales with uh, with his passive scales with his level now, which is pretty good because at level 1 he gets 30%, at level 6 he gets 40%, and 11 he gets 50%. And then he, he's even stronger with his passive late game now, it does 60% more damage, so he definitely does uh, more damage late game now. Uh, now Lucian can get movement speed from his W when he hits an ally, and that's pretty big too. Yeah, he just gets a lot of movement speed now from level 1 and going onwards. I think these buffs are pretty minor and it probably won't change his phase of the of the game right now because he's still a very... He used to be a very strong lane bully, but now he's just a, a decent laner with a decent scaling into mid game. So Nami's passive, which is give move speed to people that she's casting spells on, got increased from 40 to 60. And they also made it so that when the ulti goes by people, they get double the effects. So this basically makes it so you can ult at the enemy team and your team can kind of follow the ult and can get a bunch of move speed and kind of chase people down, which I, I think is quite good. It should make her a lot better at initiating fights, which before she she's always kind of only been like a peeler. She can't really initiate it at all. But I think this would kind of make it a cool tool for that, which Quite a good change. So, uh, Nasus Q, after using it, your next basic attack has 25 additional range. That pretty much means that you can get an extra auto in after you do your Q, and so you don't have to like move up an auto after your Q. Rumble got a huge nerf for his R. His cooldown increased from like 105 to 120. Pretty huge nerf. It's gonna take him forever to get ultis off now since it takes longer to come back up. And his ulti is now. 
shorter on the max possible range than before. So uh, Twitch got a small buff where his ambush is uh, 20 mana less and his alt gives uh, 4 more damage at max rank. Which is, I think it's fine. Twitch is getting a little bit of love I guess, but uh, he's still in the same spot. And I don't think this will change too much, but it's still helpful. Uh, Velikov's got a pretty big buff on his Q, now it's really easy to land now, so it's pretty big. And uh, Or it's not really easy to land, but it has longer range, so you can do more fancy things with uh, his Q, which is pretty awesome for laning. Uh, you can now activate your Q a bit quicker too, so it's harder to react to. So I think this is overall a pretty good buff for laning phase, and just overall it's pretty good late game too, so Velikov's might be a good champ now. Zach's getting a small buff this patch where they're giving him more range on his E. It's kind of interesting that they're doing that. I never really thought that his E not being long enough was his issue, but maybe this will just make him so much range that the other issues he has don't matter as much. So I guess we'll see how it is. I'm skeptical that it'll help him too much, but we'll have to see. Zed is getting some of the nerfs on his alt reverted this patch, going from a 1 second delay to a 0.5 second delay. I think this will help Zed a lot because it's pretty brutal when you couldn't jump back to your shadow for a whole second. I think 0.5 seconds is still probably long enough for people to get the exhaust or the CC on you before you can jump back, but it'll just give a little bit more room for Zed to outplay people that he's trying to assassinate, so maybe it'll bring back him into the meta. Victor is getting his hex score changed in this patch. It's basically a straight up nerf to his hex score because I feel like after the AP item changes, it was just too strong compared to everything else. So they're making it so it's way weaker before you upgrade it. And by level three, it is similar strength, maybe a little bit worse, but it's basically just a nerf to his item because he's getting too much AP from it. And it's better to upgrade it earlier now as opposed to later. Eric Gage, it's one of the new items that's coming in for probably top lane versus that can build. And I think this item is going to be pretty good on champions that have high base 80 damage or base 80 per level. And it's like one of the only items that scale with base 80. So I think this is a pretty good item to rush on champions like Garen or Darius. So this item is probably going to scale really well with Triforce or Sheen since it's the only item that scales with base AD, and you could combine it with Triforce to make it even stronger. The new item they added is called Titanic Hydra. It's almost similar to Revenous Hydra, but this one is better for tanky bruisers because it gives health instead of lifesteal now. It's passive and uh, active is different compared to Revenous Hydra. It does maximum health physical damage. The active does damage in a cone behind the target yet. So I think this item is really good on top players that have a lot of HP and AD, like Sign, Renekton, champions that scale well with HP. Like pretty much Renekton, whenever you ulti, you're gonna have more HP, so synergize well with Titanic Hydra. And Sign, since it's W passive, for every keep you kill, you get more HP, it's gonna scale well with that. So I think in a 1v1 scenario, this item might be a good first buy. Just so you can have good wave clear and maybe dominate your lane. So Aegis was made cheaper and made so that the magic resist on it was, is now only 15 instead of 20. And the HP regen is cheaper. So th this should be a, a lot better to kind of build. Now there's only 1600 rather than 1900. It's a lot easier for supports to kind of get that and get that earlier. And they also made Banner. Banner also has the reduced magic resist aura, but it's 250 gold cheaper. So getting that early, should be quite effective. I think it's gonna be quite a good item, the new banner. I think banner is already like a good item to get early, like a good first rush item, and making it this cheap should make it just even better. Cinder Hulk's getting changed this patch where it gives more health right when you get it, but less bonus percent scaling, down to 15 from 25. So this means that you'll be stronger right when you get your Cinder Hulk, but you will not scale as well as you would before by building additional health items, which I think to be a good change. I sort of wish they did that from the beginning, but it'll make it so Cinder Hulk junglers won't really scale as hard, but they'll still be quite good. I really like the Frozen Heart nerfs for me at least because uh, Frozen Heart, I think it was too cheap and it gave way too many or way too much utility for uh, tanks because they lowered your attack speed and it was just a really easy item to buy because 
Glacial Shroud is really strong early game too, so everyone loves Glacial Shroud. And then, uh, yeah, it's just really easy to build Frozen Heart, so pretty glad that I got nerfed. On this patch, Bucket is getting changed a bit. Aegis is getting its aura nerfed where it doesn't give health regen and it gives less MR, which is pretty good, I guess, because maybe this will mean that junglers don't have to build it every single game. I'm hoping it doesn't mean that junglers still have to build it, but it's just worse because that's sort of what happened when Bulwark was removed, but we'll see. They're changing the way Locket works too, where it gives a bigger shield, but for less duration. So it's more interactive, which I think is a good change. It just puts more skill into the item where you don't just have it and make your team super tanky. You actually have to time when you want to use that shield to absorb the most damage you can. So I think that is an interesting change in the right direction. I still kind of hope they remove Aegis, but maybe that's for another day. Randy's Omen change, they lowered the cost with that. They also lowered the health and armor by a bit. But the new thing about Randy's Omen is it now reduces critical strike damage by 10%. And that pretty much means that you can just go straight for the 80 carries. I think this changes wasn't actually a nerf since the new critical strike thing scales really well against AD carries. Since they always build crit, you're gonna reduce their damage by a lot. For team fights on Olaf, you generally always want to have Ghost up when it comes to team fights. You can either rush down the back line and coordinate with your teammates to dive, or you can just go on the tanks and then peel back after chasing.